What's up, divas and divos? It's your girl April. So you guys already know what time it is. It's Real Talk Wednesday. So the day that I record this is on a Tuesday. And I'm going to get into some real talk topics. We're not going to waste too much time on the bullshit because the reason okay a lot i've got a lot of emails or comments like what happened to last week's real talk what happened to last week's real talk etc etc so listen this is not going to be like an apologetic video i'm not going to apologize for being the person that i am because it is what it is but i did you know i'm going to apologize to those who were in the middle of watching it and unfortunately the video stopped because I put it on private. I put it on private because there was too many bitches in their feelings about the way that I may have reacted towards someone sending me an email of taking over my channel for like three weeks um, while I was on vacation. I never really even stated in any particular video that I was going to leave for three weeks. I just said I needed to get away from YouTube. I never gave a time frame. I just said I wanted to go see my mom. So there wasn't going to be like a stop and I don't even know if that's a word, but there wasn't going to be like a halt of all videos. Real Talk was still going to continue. I didn't really need, I don't really need like a camera camera, like my Canon to do Real Talk. I could just do that from my phone because it doesn't have to be professional looking like that. It's just Real Talk. You don't even have to watch me. You can just listen. So the only people that I'm going to apologize is to those who were in the middle of watching it because I did get probably like 10 or 20 emails and um, comments like I was in the middle of watching and it stopped, etc, etc. So I do apologize to you ladies for disrupting your program as you were watching. I really am very apologetic for that. However, I'm not going to be apologetic for the person that I am. There were a lot of comments on that video talking about, oh, you could have just said no to her. You just said a no to her. But here's the thing. A lot of people don't seem to listen and that's the problem that is seems like this that's the problem not even with this channel but that's the problem with people in general you only hear what the fuck you want to hear you only pay attention to what the fuck you want to pay attention the title on the video could say free trust glamour wig amanda synthetic color 1b and it'll say that and i will say that in the video and then there'll be a comment what wig is that and what color is that? Like, did you not hear me and did you not read the title? Like, so that's the problem with people in general. They don't pay attention. So in that video last week, I did um, tell you guys that I went away for a week. And you guys know that I didn't go anywhere, but I just stopped uploading videos for a whole week because I needed a break. But I also stated that while I was on break i did get an email from another youtuber um who was one of my followers who stated that you know she thought it was a great idea for me to leave for like three weeks and that she could do my real talk for me and she felt bad for me basically what she said was i feel bad for you i'm sorry but i thought this would be a really great opportunity for you and me to go ahead and be able to branch out my channel so what I would like to do basically is upload my video, my real talk segment for you onto your channel while you're away and that will gain her subscribers. So when she sent me this email, the first reply to her was, thank you for your concern, but no thank you. Okay, I was as polite as could be to her and let her know I really didn't need her to upload anything for me and that thank you. But however, also I did say, it's a shame how you would take my time of stress and depression for your own game. What makes you think that I would allow you to upload anything to my channel? And I wrote her that and emailed it to her. Her second email to me after I sent that one was how could basically, um, I broke her heart. That was mean of me to say that and et cetera, et cetera. How is it mean of me to say something to you when you were trying to gain off of my state of mind at the time and how dare you send me a second email telling me like basically how i hurt her feelings and how i made her feel like a bum on the street now you already told me that you were trying to gain from me being off of youtube and while i because of my situation i think that was really really kind of bitter not even bitter excuse me i think that was really really kind of harsh and selfish of someone to anybody to write anyone that's just like me saying oh well you're sick and you're dying but you know what since you're dying i can go ahead or since one of your kids died or whatever the case may be i can go ahead and gain subscribers because that's what she said i can go ahead and boost my channel while you're away so you're going to take my state of mind as a way to gain. I didn't think that email was appropriate at all, the very first one. So in my response, 
I replied to her, thanks for your concern, but no thank you. I didn't even have to write thanks for your concern because in honesty, she really wasn't concerned about me at all because had she been really concerned, she wouldn't have tried to gain anything from it. But I really was hoping that she wasn't going to reply back after I sent her the first email as a response, and she did. And her response was basically, I made her feel like a bum on the street. So now you're about to play victim to me when you was trying to gain off of me and my time of need. I don't think that's right. So yeah, I did come at her in the video because I'm not going to allow anyone to play victim to me when they're trying to use me. So for those of you guys who were like, you could have just told her no, you could have just told her no. Maybe you weren't paying attention as I was reading and you wanted to hear what you wanted to hear, but I did tell her no and I told her no in a nice professional manner because I didn't get out of character. The second email I got out of character because you're not about to send me a response and try to make Make me feel bad for telling you no okay and being honest with you and telling you you're trying to gain because I'm stressed out right now that's that's like totally wrong but here's the thing with a lot of people on YouTube in general in the world you guys don't like truth and you don't like honesty and I may not be the person for you yeah I did lose a lot of subscribers from that video but you know what at the end of the day nobody in here nobody is tucking me in at the end of the night saying we love you I hope you sleep well I hope you get over this nobody is tucking me in and I, I get a lot of emails and comments saying you know my prayers are with you your family etc etc and I'm really appreciative to that but you cannot really know how I felt when someone's trying to gain off of my state of mind. That was like the worst email that I could have ever read. You could have sent me an email like, oh, fuck you, bitch, blah, blah, blah. I probably wouldn't have really even cared too much. But to the fact that you, as a person, wanted to gain off of how I was felt and what I was going through was like really harsh. Like, damn, you only want to just gain off of me being depressed? That's some fucked up shit. Like, I would never write that to nobody. So, yeah, I did come off kind of strong, but that's me as a person because you're not about to use me. I've had enough of people in my lifetime use and walk over me, okay? Not only on YouTube, but in general in life. And though I may come across as really strong and bitter or mean or unfiltered to you, in reality, I'm a really good-hearted person and I'd give my last to anybody, okay? To my last to anybody. And the way that this young lady made me feel, she's basically like, oh, well, you know, that's sad. Uh, people ask for help all the time, but you're asking me for help to gain off of my situation. Like, that's not really asking me for help. And on top of that, you're asking me for access to my YouTube channel. Why would I allow anybody to do that? On top of that, if I would have just told her no, like you guys said, or ignored her, then it would have been a problem. If I would have gave her access to my channel, it would have been a problem. So it's like either hit or miss. Nobody's happy. Everybody's always got something to complain about. And I don't try to get on here and complain about anything because in reality, at the end of the day, I have my family who is going to always make sure that I'm okay, regardless of what amount about what you guys may think about what anybody may think so no I'm not gonna apologize for the way I came off of her and yeah I did put the video on private because for one I just came back off of a long week of not being on YouTube and I'm not about to have none of these bitches on YouTube in their feelings writing dumb shit talking about oh you so mean you so mean you so mean but I bet if it were you in that same situation you wouldn't like it at all you wouldn't have thought it was cool to send anybody an email saying that but you know, wear the shoe on your foot for a moment and see where I'm coming from. But I'm not going to about to waste my whole time or my whole real talk on this situation because I'm not. I just don't have time for it. It just seems like, you know what? May is over and I'm glad it's over. Okay, like seriously, I'm glad it's over. And like the very beginning of April, I mean of June, you know, I did have a little squalor with somebody else on YouTube who I have been not even friends with but associates with since day one of me being on YouTube from back in the past. And I'm not even going to mention his name because he's really not relevant to me. But here's the thing. Thing. this one particular person he has created like numerous of channels he will start some beef with people and then shut his channel down and he does videos on wigs um he's a white man he's it doesn't matter what skin color you are but he's doing african-american wigs now listen I've been cool with him since day one. Not even cool, but I have been tolerant. Some things I'm not tolerant. But it seems like he only wants to basically comment when it's something wrong. Okay, but you don't you don't see the wrong there. But you're emailing me asking me to buy synthetic wigs from you. Like, do I want to buy a synthetic wig? And I had had enough of his mouth or his comments. And my one video that I did recently, and the hair was yellow, he had the comment. 
Now, I had got, this is like eight years in, and I'm tired of you. So I basically told him to shut the fuck up, go sit in the corner and shut the fuck up. So now we back and forth with each other. And on top of that, you try to sell me your wigs, and you on your channel with your comments disabled, and you got two videos, and you got yakky wigs on, and you're a white male, and you got yakky texture wigs on. But you don't see nothing wrong with that. And your wigs is yellow, like. But you're going to comment. Then, you know, I come back and forth. We going back and forth. And it's like, okay, you are, like, in your late 30s, maybe 40. And you living at home with your mother. And you are in this dingy basement. Like, don't ever come for me. And then on top of that, now you trying to bring my daughter in. Because he's like, I told him, basically, I said, you're fat ass. You shut your fat ass mouth. He's like, fat people can't call each other out. Why the fuck can't we? Fat people could call each other out, and I'm sorry, but I'm not fat, and I'm not saying that you were, but shut your fat ass mouth up because your mouth is running two miles per minute, okay? So, but fat people can come at each other. But he was just basically like, look at your child. Like, so I'm trying to figure out, um, Denim, that's his name, Denim, is it you that's been talking about my daughter Mumsy in my, in my videos about her weight? Because why are you bringing my daughter up? You live at home, you're like in your late 40s, you live at home, and you and, and on top of that, he's just like, you ghetto, I don't speak Ebonics, so like, are you fucking being racist too at the same time? So you're being racist, and you're talking about my daughter. Hmm. So, you know, I, I, I've had enough. And sometimes it's like you sit back and you just allow people but for so long to get at you. And then it's the to a point where it's like, you know what? I'm not going to allow you to talk to me like this. And I'm not going to allow you to disrespect me. I don't really give a fuck about how you feel or anybody else feels. But you're not going to come on here or any social media or my face and talk shit about me. Like, I'm not going to allow it. I'm not going to allow you to use me. So I have been fed up with the bullshit and like on top of that i got people on my real talk last week like oh you're mean oh you should have stayed gone for a little bit longer you needed no bitch i'm not mean and no bitch i shouldn't have stayed longer um but put yourself in my situation do you think it's okay for somebody to send you an email and basically like say to you i'm so sorry about what's going on in your life but this isn't about that. This is about how I can improve your channel and et cetera, et cetera. So, bitch, basically what you said is you sorry for what's going on in my life, but you're not really sorry. But I'm about to gain off of your own fucking shit that you're going off of. And then when I tell you thank you for your concern, but no thank you, because I didn't even have to write that because you ain't really motherfucking concerned. I'm wrong. Girl, bye. Listen, let me tell y'all something. I don't have to justify myself to no motherfucking body on YouTube or in life in general. Because what I do is what the fuck I do, okay? And that's just bottom line to what the fuck I do. And if nobody don't fucking like it, then oh well, all right? It has nothing to do with this is my channel. It just has to do with me as a person, oh motherfucking well, okay? And then I got people on there talking about, oh well, uh, one person, one asshole, like, oh, the... Potty mouth, grandma. Let me tell you something. First of all, I'm about to be 43, and it doesn't matter if I have a grandkid. And I'm, I might be 43, but bitches, I'm not motherfucking old. Okay, let's just get that twisted. I could party with the best of you, and I could tangle with the best of you. So let's just get that out, motherfucker. With. And then it's on. Oh well, she's um. What did somebody say? Oh, I'm bisexual. And if I was, so motherfucking what? Yeah, I have had a relationship with a female too so fucking what let's just get over that this is the real world if y'all bitches is not real enough to be a, a, a man or what you who you had a relationship with in life then that's y'all business i really don't give a fuck but don't act like it's new to the motherfucking world or whatever it is like that you know what i'm saying it is what it is and i am who the fuck i am and if nobody don't like it well you know what at the end of the day <sighs> I'm still going to breathe, but I'm not about to justify myself to anybody. So the only people that I'm apologetic to is for those who are watching the video and that's that. So now we're going to move past that and we're going to move on to the next subject because I'm not going to waste any more body's time with this shit. And this just might be the last motherfucking real talk. I don't really know. Um, it might not be and it might not, but this is how I feel about Real Talk. I do this on a weekly basis and I make sure that it's current and it's up to date and it's consistent. Like every Wednesday, you guys get a Real Talk, okay? I make sure, I make it my business, all right, to do that. 
this is what the fuck I do to make everybody happy and to give you different kind of content, okay? But here's the thing. I don't have time for bitches coming at me, talking shit. Like, I don't have time for that. I hate to see all the thumbs down because y'all want to watch the shit, but then when I give my two cents, y'all want to write dumb negative shit or y'all want to thumbs it down. And it's like, why do you guys even bother? So a part of me is like, you know what, April? Fuck real talk. Let's not even do this no more because I'm done with it. I got emails or comments in the last week's real talk is, oh, that's messed up that you would even divulge a, um, that email about what she wrote you. Okay, so you guys didn't like for me to put it on blast about the email that she sent to me but it's okay for me to read everybody else's email about oh they man is fucking other bitches or they mama is stealing their rent money or etc etc y'all want to hear that but when somebody put me on blast and get into my feelings y'all don't want to hear that shit like what sense does that motherfucking make so you know what i'm saying like i have i have like really like been to the part where it's like you know what I don't even know if I'm going to even do this real talk no more because this is probably the part that's getting me stressed out as reading the negative comments or seeing the thumbs down. And then a part of me is like, why is you fucking worried about anybody thumbs in this down? Who gives a fuck? Bitch, you still watching this shit. So if you don't agree with my opinion, that's your opinion, you know? But either way, I don't really even know. Um, I'll probably continue doing it for a little while longer, but I'm not going to allow anybody to stress me the fuck out. If it continues to stress me the fuck out, then trust and believe there'll be no more real talk. We just gonna call a motherfucking story time. Time where we make the fuck shit up, okay? Because it seems like motherfuckers love when people get on here and talk drama about their lives and make stories up. Stories that are so, like, fucking see-through and transparent. Like, really, bitch, that really motherfucking happened to you? Like, anyway. So, let's pass that because I'm done with so, it. Last week, I did try to show off some products and I had to kind of, like, cut the video and put it on private. So, I'm going to re-show them because I want you guys to know what the hell it is. Um... Damn it. Now I got to get up. Hold on. Okay, so last week when I was doing the real talk, a young lady named, excuse me, Beverly, she sent me, I think her name was, yes, Beverly. She sent me a package in my post office box, okay? And it was of this product called Posh. Uh, perfectly posh. Oh my God. So first of all, they got some really nice products. She sent me some really cool stuff and I'm about to show you guys, but I'm going to post her information below because it's really great skincare products. It's not makeup. Okay. So if you guys are looking for makeup, it's not that, but I like the fact that you do have a catalog, not a catalog, but like a, a paper where you could order from. So I like stuff like this because I could sit in my bed and read it and then be able to decide if I want some. I mean, like it's really cool to go on the internet too, but I like this stuff too. You know, if you old school like me, then you like this. This type of stuff so she did send me this huge bar of soap which i have been using for like um two weeks now oh my god the soap is like humongous and i'm not gonna go and get it because i don't want to touch it because it's soap and my hands are um gonna be with soap lavender on it but i'm hoping that i can show you guys in the magazine where it's at it's like this humongous bar of soap it's not like the prettiest color it's more or less like a light brown color but it has like exfoliating stuff inside of it so every time you wash your skin with it you can definitely feel it but it's just like a natural color um it's oh god okay here it goes right here it's called be sweet stand tall chunk perfectly posh wear a crown big bath bar so this is it right here and i apologize this time i motherfucking apologize if you can't see the ad too well because of the ring light but it's this huge bar of soap and it, like the smell is good but it's not that potent but it lasts so long and exfoliates while you're washing with it and it's amazing she also sent me this gel i think it's called go go west facial mask um so i don't really consider this like i said last week to be a facial mask because to me when you put on a facial mask it gets a really really hard and tight this doesn't which is cool it's kind of like it looks like a like an orangish color um you see that it's but and it has like exfoliating stuff in it too so you put it on your face for like five minutes you clean it off and it does look good um and your face does look brighten and softer but it doesn't get tight like that so if you're looking for something tight this is not it but they have loads of different things also this queen yas it says yas 
Yas. Yas Queen. Big fat yummy hand cream. Now this stuff, I like this a lot. It's hand cream and it's really thick. Let me tell y'all something. Y'all know my feet is dry as a motherfucker, okay? I be putting this on my feet. I need like a, four times the size of this bottle. But I like the designs on the actual packaging because it reminds me of like Moroccan type of style. You know what I mean? I love the designs. The designs are so chic and pretty. So she sent me this, a Rhapsody of Flowers, Fruits, Musk, and Amber. I love the designs the most, but this is some really thick ass hand cream. So girl, I'm going to need the foot cream. And then also she sent me this lip balm, which I think is like five bucks. And so I've been wearing this um, every day. Um, it's called What a Lovely Pear. And it's just delightly infused with prickly pear. And it's just a lip balm. So it doesn't look like your average chapstick. It's not color tinted or anything. If you're looking for that, then this is not it. Um, like I said, it's not makeup. It's, uh... And it smells good. It's just basically good stuff for your skin. So I will definitely post her information below for you guys. And I want to say thank you once again, Beverly, for sending me that stuff. Now, listen, last Wednesday, I did go and get my teeth shaved down. Um, So the teeth, these two are not my teeth. Any, they're not my real teeth. But they are shaved down really, really tiny like rice grains underneath. And I will show you guys the picture in this video so that you can see. But I do have temporary... um teeth on and I will get my real crowns on the 15th of June which is four days before my birthday <gasps> do I need to put my tiara on for the rest of this video in case you guys are like oh your hair looks cute this is actually a half wig um so I did post up like this but yeah so this is my birthday month and I will be you guys already know 43 so yes, yeah, 43 on the 19th of June, but so I'm really excited because on the 15th of June, I do get my permanent crowns. So she made these the best she could, you know what I'm saying? Because my crowns will look, uh, my real crowns will look a million times better than this. But as you can tell, the gap is much smaller. Okay. And it's even, all right. So it's even. Um, the gap is much smaller than normal. Huh. Got a little popcorn right there. Um, and of course they're not bright white because my teeth are not bright white, unfortunately. But these are a little bit more darker than my crowns would be because these are just temporary. There's not so much they can do for temporary. I was not trying to walk around looking like a freaking alien with little tiny teeth. So, um, so these are just... My, um, I'm going to just zoom in so you guys can see. These are just my, um, temporary teeth. Yeah, so on the 15th of June, I will have my real teeth in. Okay, well, they're not real, but anyway, so whatever. So, yeah, and whatever. So that's about it. Okay, so let's get into the real talk. But before we do, I want to send a special shout out and thank you for a lot of the people that have been sending me stuff in my post office box because I'm so appreciative of that. And you guys know that, but you know what I'm saying? I still need to say thank you to you guys. So one of my favorite subscribers, Joan, she has sent Mumsy a really lovely things like her backpack. And Mumsy has been talking about this backpack last week. Like, oh, I don't have to buy a new backpack for school coming up in August because they start school in August here because I already got one. It's really, really nice. And I'm like, what are you talking about? And then I remember that Joan has sent her this backpack along with the gift cards of Dollar Tree, et cetera, et cetera. So this time around, she did send me something. Um, and I was so happy about this because you guys know, you hear me talk about it all the time. I love The Walking Dead as much as I love Wonder Woman. If I was co to compare the two, I really couldn't say which one I love more because I've been a Wonder Woman fan since the age of God knows when, probably like six years old. But, um, because that's when it was on TV, but I love The Walking Dead. Daryl is my husband. You guys just don't know that, but we are married secretly on the DL, okay? Don't let the tabloids tell you different. So she sent me this Walking Dead t-shirt, and I absolutely love it because, OMG, I have, like, the biggest crush on everybody on The Walking Dead, including Michonne, and it was just a regular t-shirt, and it had a collar, you know what I mean? And 
I don't really like, I can't take collars too much. And I just try to make it look feminine as possible. So the girl went and cut the collar off from like right here. to all, So that way I can give it like an off the shoulder look and it can look just more sexy. I could have did more, but I didn't want to do too much. So she did send me this amazing Walking Dead shirt, which I love. And also, okay, so she also sent me two of my favorite. And this is, I know where this is from. It's from Wally Worlds. And you guys know I love Walmart, so don't sleep on the Wall Worlds. Okay, so she sent me this Wonder Woman shirt. So cute. So she did send me a pink tank top to wear underneath it because the sides are so open. But she sent me this and... <gasps> She sent me uh, two of my favorites at one time, and I was like, yes, hunty, yes. So I want to tell her thank you, even though she wrote in the letter, you don't have to thank me. I know you're appreciative of it. I still want to say thank you. And if, Joan, you're watching this, can you please send me an email with your phone number? Because I would love to talk with you and just verbally tell you thank you. Also, one of my other favorite subscribers in the world is Jennifer. And let me go get... Uh, hold on. Okay, so it's really cool when you know people so well and these people pay attention. So everybody knows, like, I love One's Woman. So when I got the box from the post office, first of all, she sent me a One's Woman Mother's Day card. And I know I showed you guys, but she also sent me this. And I just got this last week. I posted this on Instagram. So yes, hunty. <gasps> Girl, okay, first of all, I didn't even drink out of this cup yet. It has like the icicles in there where you could just freeze them. I didn't even drink out of this cup yet because I don't want to ruin it. And I wanted to drink out of it, but I didn't want to drink out of it. So I think I'm going to put it in my display with all my other Wonder Woman cups because if I drink out of it, and then that means I have to wash it, and then my kids will drink out of it. And then I will see one of my kids drinking out of this, and then I'll be like, that's not your cup. And they'll be like, oh, I thought this was for everyone. You know, this wasn't for everyone. Because I had one like this. It was kind of similar, and they did that. So, yeah. So, she sent me this, and I absolutely love this, okay? So, yes, girl, yes. I love this. So, I want to say thank you to Jennifer. But she also sent Mumsy. See what I'm saying? Everybody knows us so well. Mumsy, love emo. Oh, shit. Okay, I didn't even realize that the hat was identical to Mumsy's emoji pillow on the floor right there. So she sent Mumsy this, and Mumsy has braids in her hair. Mumsy was like, I'm going to wear this anyway. I don't care. So, yes, thank you so much, Jennifer. We love this. We love everything. And <clears throat> this is actually in my display because I don't be wanting to ruin anything. So, yes, honey, yes. So also, hold up, hold up. I got to look up in my email because I want to make sure that, um, so another one of my favorite subscribers, everybody's my favorite subscriber, all of my favorite subscribers, because I love you all. So I go to my post office box yesterday, and I was like, what is this? This is a poster, obviously, right? So, okay, so I get home. So I open it up. It's like a task to open it up, okay? And so I unreal it. OMG. So, okay, do you guys see that? So this is, she had this specially made. So it's like picture paper. And it's the word of, hello, what? Yes. So I'm going to put this actually on my bathroom door so that way I can see it every day. It's like in my makeup portion of my room. I mean, because I don't have any wall space in here. Or I definitely would. But I would definitely be putting this up. And I love it. Guys, you guys know how much I love Wonder Woman. Just watching her go like this, like, reminds me of when I had my little Wonder Woman underoos on and everything. So, like, I'm so, like, excited about all this Wonder Woman stuff. I have not seen the movie yet because it came out on Friday. And I'm, it's not that I'm claustrophobic, but I don't really like to be around a huge crowd of people. And I already knew in advance that, that movie was sold out and it was, like, crowds and crowds. And it was, like, crowds and crowds of people there. And I just don't like to be a amongst a huge crowd of people. I don't really feel comfortable like that. I can't sit comfortably and there's so much noise coming from all type of directions. So it kind of like messes with my nerves. So I figured, you know what? I will go see Wonder Woman on my birthday, which is on a Monday. And that way I'll go during the daytime and it's not crowded and I could be able to relax with my family and enjoy the movie more. So I'd rather just wait two weeks for Wonder Woman versus going when it first comes out. I never go to any movie that I know is going to be really popping um, because I just don't really like to be around a crowd of people like that. It just, it kind of just messes with my nerves. Um, 
I also did get some really cool letters and cards um, from D Haven. She sent me two cards. And I'm not going to read the cards because they're personal. But I want to say thank you for that. Um, also from Anne Marie, I want to say thank you. Words of encouragement is what everybody needs. So listen, if you want to just send me a letter just saying how you feel about me, don't send me no fuck letter, okay? But just like, uh, if you want to just send me a letter, hey, I love you, or hey, how you doing, or et cetera, et cetera, then you can definitely go ahead and send me a letter. My post office box is down below. And just like Mother's Day cards that I just kind of got, like from Shannon, or just car words of encouragement. I love getting stuff like this. Also, one of my divas, Miss Shannon, um, this is not the same person. And nope, it's funny. I got two Shannons. She sent me like a three page letter that she typed up, girl. Okay, which I also do appreciate. And I read it, I'm not gonna read that to you guys because it's like my personal stuff and just like thank you cards and everything like that. So, yes, I want to tell everybody I thank you all so much. This one is from um Jen GNC, I think it is. Oh, because this is from my girl, Joan. Okay? You don't have to think. So, this is what she put in there with that. And then, like, from Beverly, um, for Posh Purpose, she also sent me a card. So, yes, you guys, thank you, everyone, for sending me cards and just writing to me, like, this is what I like when I go in my post office box and I get to read letters and to me I call them love letters because you guys are just, like, love letters. Like, nobody really writes letters anymore. It's always about text and stuff. So, I'm old school and I like to read letters and plus I also like to keep them. I have a little box where I like to keep them. Pretty soon it'll be a big box but one day when I get really, really old and I'm not doing YouTube anymore, I can always go back and think about what I used to do in life and that's just what I like to do. Call me weird or whatever but I keep love letters, okay? Even the love letters, even the love letters from my husband when he was in jail, I have like this huge box, okay? And I still do read them so it's love letters and I love love letters. It reminds me of like old school. It, it's really, really, really like a real person's way of thinking. Though some people write letters and be bullshit but you know what I'm saying? I love letters. So, yes. So, yeah, I'm super happy about my Wonder Woman stuff and my Walking Dead stuff, like, girl, listen. But also, let me tell y'all, this, I got this Wonder Woman a gift last Mother's Day, not the Mother's Day that just passed, um, but was it last Mother's Day or my birthday last year from my daughter Tati? This was before the movie even came out. This is when the movie was coming out, and I bet y'all bitches didn't even know about this one. I think like this, oh, it's a little dusty. This is like one of my favorite ones, a woman pieces. And my daughter Tati got this for me. And she specially ordered it from, I think it was Target. And it took like two months to get here. But I love this. This was last year. This is before, this was like a year ago before the movie even was surfacing. But you know, the movie, everybody knew the movie was coming out, but they didn't know when. So yes check that out what's so funny is it looks like it's a batman symbol in the back right here you guys can tell but i freaking am in love with this and then it yeah so it's you know what this is actually excuse me hold up this is batman versus superman a league of justice okay so that's why you see the bat and the superman sign but this is the wonder woman so she got this for me way before the movie came out so see yes so a girl beginning all the good, good, good stuff when it comes to Wonder Woman. Super duper fan. I've been a fan since childhood. So we are going to get on to the real deal, um, which is real talk. And I do have like three. Hopefully I get to them. I don't want to pass out with this um, body waist trainer on. If you guys have not seen my video from today, I do have a waist trainer video. So make sure that you guys check it out. I will. Um, it's on my channel as well as like a new hair video. You guys know I love doing the inexpensive hair videos for you guys. So, yes. So, I do apologize if I'm not looking at you right now. I'm just getting ready to go through my emails, uh, pull up the emails that I have selected for Real Talk. But if you have a Real Talk situation that you would like to have talked about on YouTube, you can definitely go ahead and send me an email to muffinismylovers2012 at gmail.com. Please post in the subject line, Real Talk, and as well as that. Um, yeah, let's get on to this real talk. Okay, so let's get on to this real talk. I got to show you guys a little shoulder so it can be sexy. Okay. 
Hey, Miss April. First off, let me start by saying I love your videos and your personality. You're not afraid to tell it how it is and offer the advice that people need to hear. You are a very positive person, and I see you as an older sister figure. I look forward to your real talks, and they're the highlight of my week. And you manage to slay every wig. You're always on point. Mm. Whether it's short or long, curly or straight, blonde, brown or pink, you can manage to still pull it off. I also enjoy your Dollar Tree hauls. I thought I was the only one who enjoyed the Dollar Store so much. Laugh out loud, can't beat that. One buck cost. Hello, girl. Everybody like cheap. But the reason I'm emailing you is I found myself in quite the predicament. You can call me Ash and the guy I'm referring to, Noah. I am a 19-year-old college student and I will be a junior this year at Virginia Tech. And I'm so excited to be halfway down, halfway done with school already. I'm studying sociology, criminology, and peace studies and violence prevention. Whew. My goal is either to go to law school or join the FBI. Okay. I have always been a goal-oriented and a planner type person. Enough about myself, though. Let's get into the story. Okay. About two or three months ago, I was at school and matched and matched with Noah on Tinder. Of course, the app is known to be a hookup type app, and though there's nothing wrong with hookups, there's not. They're not my thing. I made that very clear on my profile. I was basically a girl looking for love in the wrong place, so to say. Nonetheless, Noah messaged me and we hit it off from there. I've attached a screenshot of the message below. I'm a vegetarian, meaning I don't eat meat. So his message, of course, out to me, especially because it wasn't the standard message of, hey, or want to hook up. We ended up exchanging numbers and texting nonstop. I would always be smiling from something he would say, and we never ran out of things to talk about. A few days passed, and we were going on our first date. A little, a little Uzi, a little Uzi concert. Uzi, Uzi, I, Uzi. I'm not sure who he is. He picked me up, and we was, um, and he was a complete gentleman. He opened his car door for me and everything. We arrived to the concert, danced, and had a great time. Well, I danced mostly. He was a typical white guy with no rhythm, but it was fine. Just think about a white dad at a barbecue, and those were his dance moves. Laugh out loud. She forgot to say he had on them weaved sandals. We ended up being right next to the stage, and it was great. While we were walking back to his car, I noticed a massive puddle and was about to walk around it in the muddy grass when this guy literally picked me up bridal style and carried me over it. I thought stuff like this only happened in the movies. Me too. Maybe they can't pick my heavy ass up. Afterwards, we stopped for milkshakes and just found somewhere to sit and talk. He wanted to know about me, the good, the bad, and the ugly. Just my life story. That surprised me because guys typically don't ask about any of that stuff. But I told him everything from being raised by a single mother and why the problems I had with my with self-harm, my eating disorder, just everything. Long story short, we instantly clicked. We both felt as if we were meant to be together. He took me to see the stars, and we had great conversations. Usually guys my age are all about sex, but nothing sexual ever popped up. So you're probably wondering, what's the problem then, right? What's the problem? What's the problem? Well, four hours before we were supposed to go out on our third day, he informed me that he just couldn't come that day or any other day. Hmm. Mind you, he lived over an hour away from me, so I thought nothing of this at first. But then he told me that this that his girlfriend of four years had broken up with him three months prior and that he wouldn't be able to give me the 110% that I deserved. His words, not mine. So while I was so happy that he told me the truth rather than lying to me, I also felt crushed because here's a guy I feel I'm genuinely supposed to be with. I mean, he carried me over a puddle, told his mom about me, and told me I'm the type of girl that he would marry in a heartbeat. I just want my Prince Charming back. He told me that we could still talk as friends, but I just couldn't handle hearing that at the time. We agreed that we were meant to be together, but that the timing wasn't right. I've tried moving on, moving forward, but I just keep comparing these other guys to him. He showed me what I truly deserve, and I can't settle for less than that now. It's been two months since I last talked to him, and I genuinely miss him. So what do you think I should do? Should I talk to him now, wait a few more months, or just forget about him and try to move on? I just don't want to lose one of the very good guys left out there. Sincerely, Ash. Okay, so this, I think, is the message... Thinks you're absolutely gorgeous. Happens to be an assistant manager of a produce department whose job is typically he plans a lot together with responses. Okay. So she's so pretty and I'm hating because she's so cute. She had the cute little figure and stuff. I'm staying now. What's wrong with him? Like, seriously. Hmm. So 
ashes in a pickle. I'm gonna say pickle because you know what? I've never used the Tinder app though. I know all about it. I've read about it. I've heard about it. I've never used it because I'm not into hookups. You know what I'm saying? I'm not trying to hook up with nobody to fuck them and have sex with them. For all of that, I would just use my glass dildo and my fingers because they were just as fine. And by the time I'm done, I could just go about my business. I don't have to tell you to get the fuck out or make up a long story like, oh, you know, I don't have to lie to you. So, yeah. Okay. But so her tender date added up to be something more than just a hookup. She had a really nice guy. He's a white guy who gives a damn. It's not about color because it's all about what's inside. But he was honest to her and told her that his girlfriend of three months, his girlfriend prior broke up with him three months and he likes her, but he just feels like he can't devote 110% of his time to her right now. And it's probably because he's not probably really over it, but she feels like he's the right one for her. Now, mind you that it, it feels like that when you meet somebody, you always feel like, oh, Oh my god they're the one for me etc cetera, etc cetera. and then you go through these heartbreaks etc cetera, etc cetera. funny thing yesterday um while i was um up here about to i was in about to record my dollar tree video with mumsy my son texted me he's downstairs like you know kids text they don't call they don't come upstairs right he was like am i busy can i talk to him so basically i don't really want to divulge all his business but basically um i told him to come upstairs he's been with this young lady for a year and my son will be 19 on the 12th of just um this month of June and they argue back and forth all the time all the time all the time all the time and like the first time that I met her I walked in his room and she was like on his bed across his bed and um she didn't have no I don't think she had no bottoms on but her shorts must have been that motherfucking short because I didn't see anything so I basically told her like get the fuck out of my house bitch you dirty little bitch this is me because the position I've seen her in like with her legs Listen, it wasn't cool, okay? Just just put it like that. But anyway, so he told me everybody in the house was like, no, she had on shorts, etc. It doesn't matter if she had on shorts, you're not gonna be laying across my son's bed like that in my house. Like I don't get down like that. So she apologized, whatever, and I welcomed her into my home. Anyway, this was like a year ago. All they do is argue, argue, argue. They finally broke up. And if you broke up with him and you tell him, move forward, stop fucking texting and calling my son. So basically, when he came up here yesterday, he was in tears. He was like, you know, um, I feel like I wasted a year of my life with this girl. You know, ma, that I didn't want to be in a relationship with nobody in the first place. I'm all about getting my money and making my clothing brand because he makes clothing. So he wanted to focus on that. And I've been told him, like, you know, you know, you're young. You don't have to focus on a relationship with any girl because you're still young and focus on what you want to do with your life. And this is what I basically told him. But this little bitch, she basically arguing with him all the time. And if you tell someone, like, move on, I'm going to move forward, do you, I'm going to do me, why do you keep calling him and talking about, oh, I see you on Instagram, you're doing you, oh, I see you on, like, bitch, figure it the fuck out. So I told him, like, you know, you didn't waste a year. You basically figured out what the type of person it is. And sometimes it takes just that length of time to figure out who you're dating. Because obviously when you meet someone from the jump, they're not showing you their true self. They're showing you their representative. And I have said this in many videos and many occasions. When you meet someone, you don't see them for who they really are. Even if you're going on the app called Tender and you're meeting them just to hook up and fuck, you're meeting them for the representative because if they were really dirty and grimy, they would really tell you who they really were and they would show their true person. So you're meeting them for what they are. Some people, it takes longer for them to truly come out. But I would hear them always arguing on the phone and then she would go on Twitter and Instagram and just say little snide remarks about him. And I've been told him like, listen, leave her the fuck alone because we're not going to have this. And on Valentine's Day, it was one thing, you know, she, she called me out talking about she was at work until this time. Just like voluntarily telling me all this information. So... When I found out where she worked at, I was like, oh, you at work? What time you get off? Whatever she telling me. Me and my son, we bring her down these Valentine's Day gifts. That bitch ain't even there. Valentine's Day was on a Tuesday or Monday this year. And she didn't have to come back to work for two, for three days. So you voluntarily lied about where you were. You weren't, you know, it was just like this big over to do thing. Come to find out. I'm pretty sure she was with some other little boy. Because why would you voluntarily say that you was at work when your job just told me you didn't have to come in until Thursday? Like, so, hmm. But heartbreak, I had to like basically explain to my son yesterday, like it takes time to get over heartache because if you're a human being, then definitely your heart is going to be hurt. Your soul is going to be hurt. You have feelings. You're a human being. You're going to hurt in general. If you didn't hurt, then girl or boy, I don't know what's wrong with you. You really don't have feelings. You never gave a fuck about the person. So you're definitely, you're definitely going to have heartache regardless. Okay. Now. Here's the thing with that, okay?
Okay, I don't really understand why people do this to me. Um, this has nothing to do with this, but if it says sold out on my website, why is you buying a whole bunch of shit that says sold out? Okay, you... Uh, so anyway, like I was saying, like, if you're a human being, you're definitely going to hurt because you're a human being. And what do you expect? You're going to hurt. Um, but like I had to tell him, if you continuously allow that person to do things to you, to hurt you and to keep coming back and forth in your life and doing shit to piss you off, your time of healing is going to take longer. Now, I know right now, Ash, you may feel like this person, this white boy, I don't remember what you told me to call him, but excuse me, you may feel like, oh, he's the one, he's the one. And you may feel that way because for one, he has given you his undivided attention for the time being and he has treated you a ladylike. So of course we would consume that and we would eat that up because we may not have been able to meet a person that has treated us like that. So of course we're going to fall in love with that. And of course we're going to be like, oh my God, he's the one. He treats me like a woman. He treats me ladylike. I love, I love. It doesn't work like that, okay? Um, true indeed, like, yeah, that's great that we have met somebody who is willing to give themselves to us and treat us ladylike. However, also, let's just also keep in mind that he is not the only one out there. And there are more men that are gentlemen. Sometimes they may be a little scarce and rare, but eventually, eventually we will come to meet one who is definitely a gentleman. And I do apologize, but I just had to refund somebody their money back because why would you buy a bunch of wigs that say sold out? Like, girl, what is wrong with you? I would never buy anything that say sold out. But anyway, so of course we are open to the fact and very receptive that this is a gentleman. He treats me like a lady. He's opening doors for me. He's carried me over this puddle. I would definitely fall in love with somebody who's done that for me. Like that, that would make me really feel like the princess that I fucking am. I ain't just got to, I ain't got to wear this crown. I got this motherfucking nigga carrying me over puddles and shit. Where do you find that at? Like, I'm serious. Like, where do you, where do you really find that at anymore? So I would definitely, definitely fall in love with somebody like that. However, he's not the only one, you know? You have become very open and very acceptable to his manly manners. And that's great. But sometimes things happen to where it allows you to move forward to something that's even better than what is. Now, I'm not saying he's a bad person. I'm not saying that you're not going to find anybody like him. But the world is but so big. It's a huge world. There's lots of men. There's lots of women out there that are just the same. It's like I said, they may be a little rare and they may be a little scarce, but also it depends on where you're looking for love at. So like I told my son, you have to allow your heart to heal. And if you continuously go back to that person that is breaking your heart, you're never going to heal or the healing process is going to take longer than such. Okay. My first heartbreak, I'll never forget. I felt like it was the end of the world. I never was going to find true love again. I was just going to be her. Um, he was the one. He was the one. He was the one. Of course, I felt that way once, twice, three, four, who God knows how many times. Uh, listen, I got five kids before baby daddy, so I'm pretty sure you guys know the story about that. Um, I felt that way probably a few times, um, but eventually I've gotten over it. You cannot expect to wake up tomorrow and feel like, oh, I'm going to get over this. Though we would really, really like to get over it that quick and easy, it doesn't work like that. The heart needs time to heal. And as long as we allow that person who has broken our heart to continuously come back into our lives, your heart is just going to take longer to mend. And eventually you're going to be like, you know what? I've had enough. I'm tired of this shit. And you're, you're not going to just need... A healing heart anymore but you're just going to be numb to all of the dumb shit that they're putting you through so i'm not saying that your boyfriend is doing anything wrong but at least he was open enough and respectable and man enough to tell you that he cannot give you the 110 percent that you so deserve however ash i'm going to be honest and tell you this don't sit around and wait for him i'm not saying go out there and go back on tender and find you some new tenderoni but what I'm saying is, you never know 
you might sit around and wait for him and that waiting period that you're waiting for him he might have just moved forward back words but forward with his ex and he's happy while you're still sitting around waiting for him let's not do that okay let's let's just not do that let's move forward to where i know y'all like bitches you're using that fucking comb for everything but oh did my lash come on <gasps> yes it did hold the fuck up okay but let's just say this let's just move forward and focus on ash and Focus on making Ash happy and not worrying about what Noah is doing and what he's into. Though you have feelings for him, we have feelings, we all do. But eventually, and I'm saying eventually, your heart will be mended and you'll move forward. You'll stop thinking about him as days go by and days progress. But as long as you allow him to upset you and to come back and forth in your life, then you're not going to mend that easy. So my personal opinion to you is to let it be and just continue on with your life. And though he was the perfect gentleman, that might just have been the, the opportunity or for that might just have been like a lesson for you to see. Listen, girl, there are men like this out there. And this is just someone that I'm going to bring into your life to show you what you deserve. But he's not the one. There is someone out there that's made and built just for you, okay? That is going to be just as nice as Noah, maybe three to four times better. And this is the one that's for you. But maybe God put him in your place just to let you know there are men out there. There are gentlemen. And maybe he also saved you from being taken advantage of on that app called Tender. Okay, that might have just been your savior because I mean people do get horny. We all do get horny Okay, we all want some dick or some pussy or whatever um, And it's unfortunate that we have to go on apps like tender to find a one-night stand like I've never used it never downloaded it. I honestly didn't even know what it was until quite probably like six months ago I didn't know I was like tender. What is that like POF POF is like for the listen POF is probably like another one that you could just hook up because I think that's what guys want to do on there. And, and let me tell you, I had the POF app too. And the guys that was on there, oh, they are just grimy and dirty. And all they think about is pussy. And if y'all think that paying for um, a subscription like Match.com or what's the other one? Um, you know that one that's been out for years and it's the old white guy and he has his granddaughter. I can't remember it. Um, but... Um, you meet some creeps and weirdos on there just as well, okay? So keep that in mind. So what I would say to you, Ash, is to just move forward and let Noah be Noah. And if he wants to be friends with you, that's great. But don't let him interfere with your heart and your social life and as you as a person. And also keep in mind that you didn't want to hook up. So I wouldn't really advise you to go on Tinder anymore. Um, Noah might just have been your godsend because you might have met somebody that was really grimy and low down and you might not have been able to get over it. Meaning you might have caught something that you didn't want to catch and you couldn't get over that shit. Understand me? Feel me? There are loads of gentlemen out there in the world. We just have yet to meet them. And like I said, it all depends on where you're looking and trust and believe you weren't looking in the right place. You just got motherfucking lucky. Okay. Keep that in mind. So, give Ash your opinion below of what you guys would think. And let's move on to the next one, okay? Okay, so here we go. I first want to start off saying I love you. You really need your own talk show. I watch all your Real Talk videos over and over. They get me through work since we can have headphones in. I want to tell you a story now because this might be long. So, before you start cussing me out, I'm sorry. Laugh out loud. And her story is really not that long. Her email is not that long. You can call me Peaches, but basically I'm 22 years old, just graduated from college in December of 2016. I moved in with my boyfriend of five years in February. He is 25 years old. You can call him G. Moving in, I thought everything would be great, and it was at first. He even surprised me with a dog. Whew. So we had our own little family. But now I'm starting to second guess this whole situation. He is the breadwinner paying majority of the bills. Since it's been very hard to try to find a job, I got my degree. I do pay for two small bills, though. Cable and the, the GA power. I guess the electric bill. 
I cook, I clean, I basically do everything. This motherfucker is so unappreciative, so ungrateful, and didn't even acknowledge our five-year anniversary just a few weeks ago. I don't have no chill. I go from zero to 100 and be ready to slap his face off. Why does she say what I be saying? I be like, I'm going to slap your face off, and I go from zero to 100. That's what everybody says. So I don't, mm, and be ready to slap his face off. After five years, I feel like I'm nowhere near marriage at this point with this man. Where I feel where I feel like I should be. I love him, but I think I love him for everything I thought he could be for me. I don't have a real genuine relationship with my family, being that they are so judgmental and in so many ways trifling. So in him, I see a family or hell hopping to build one one day. Or, or excuse me, or I, in him, I see a family or hell hoping to build one one day. But at this point, I'm stuck with him because I don't want to go back to live with my parents. And in no way am I able to hold down this apartment. So what should I do? Even if you don't do a real talk, just reply. I look to you as a mother, aunt, sister, all that because I don't have a close relationship with my own. Damn, Peaches. Okay, so basically, Peaches is 22. She's been with her boyfriend for five years, and he's the breadwinner because he pays majority of the bills. But the nigga's ungrateful, unappreciative, okay? And he has not even acknowledged their five-year anniversary. So I'm going to tell you guys this. And he's bought her a dog, so they have their own little family. Um, They always say that men never realize or remember anniversaries. Um, That's not so because I never remembered my... um my wedding anniversary with my husband never never which is unfortunate i would have to try to remember things that i did in that time period to remember the date and that still shit didn't work i was two days off all the time so you know what i had to go and basically do to try to help myself remember when my actual wedding anniversary was you guys see that may 6 2004 I had to get that shit tattooed. So it's a wedding ring and it's my marriage day. I had to get it tattooed on me so that way I could just be like, oh, okay. And though my husband never knew that was the reason, that was the reason why I got that. Because I never could remember. Now, to this day, you know, I'm not married anymore, but the nigga will call me up. He called me up on May 6th and was like, I didn't think about it because I wasn't married anymore, but I definitely didn't think about it, even though, you know, you know, we still, we back together again. I still didn't think about it because he doesn't consider us to be divorced, which is cool. You know what I'm saying? That's great. Yada, yada, yada i believe in love and i love him to death um and you know that'll be the next day that we get remarried is on may 6th so you know i could keep that shit hold it down but anyway um so he, he did call me on may 6th and <sighs> listen i didn't answer the phone because i didn't hear the phone ringing okay he called me several times that day all right but i heard it not ringing twice but the third time like he called me later on that night. Um, I heard it, but I was tired. I didn't feel like talking. So I just swiped to the left and ignored the call. So the next day when he called me, which was on the 7th, he was saying something, but he didn't think I heard him. He thought I had the phone on mute when in reality I didn't. I did by accident. I had my headphones in. So he didn't know that I heard him, but basically he was like, I called you to tell you happy anniversary yesterday. And I was like, what? And he was like, yeah, I called you to tell you happy anniversary yesterday. I was like, what are you talking about? And then I had to look. I was like, oh, yeah. You know, I had to play it off like, I remember. But then I was like, we're not even married. So he was like, uh, it doesn't matter. We still are in my eyes. I don't really consider that a divorce, et cetera, et cetera. If I can get it changed, I'm going to get it changed. So men are not the only ones that don't remember anniversaries, okay? Because trust and believe when a bitch is busy and has a lot going on, she don't remember either. So she got to get tattooed the fuck up just so she can remember, okay? Yeah, that's why I got that tattoo, so I can remember. I never remember. And it was really funny because he always remembered, like, dude, I felt like I was the nigga in the situation, okay? So as far as you guys being together for five years and you just feeling like, you know, you're not getting anywhere with him and he's unappreciative and ungrateful. Well, you never really explained to me what he was unappreciative and ungrateful about. Probably about the house cooking, the house cleaning and the cooking. Does he not say thank you? Or is it the fact that he forgot that it was your anniversary, your five year anniversary for not being married, that he forgot about that? You know what I'm saying? Because some people don't really take that as really an anniversary like that, which is unfortunate. And uh, trust me, am I in no way, shape or form taking his side or yours for that matter? But 
what I do feel like is maybe old dude was just so consumed in work that he just it probably like slipped his mind as we do a lot but I I'm not there with you I'm not sitting on your couch or a fly on your wall to know what's really going down but I will tell you guys this or I'll tell you this if you feel like your relationship is not getting anywhere First things first, what you, what I would do as a person, because I've been through this, okay, remember, I have, was married, um, I wanted to be married really soon, and some things happen at a time pace, sometimes we just don't want to um, rush things, and my, in my life, I feel like this, and this is even before I was even married, um, at first I wanted to be married really bad, and then we was going to get married, but then we changed our mind, then we went to Disney World and got married. Because we was planning a wedding wedding and it just didn't work out because we got his mother running off at the fucking mouth and his sister, her fucking ratchet ass talking shit. So we figured like, he figured, listening to his mama that he was too young to get married or whatever. That's cool. But your son wasn't too young to make a baby. But whatever. It is what it is. So we ended up getting married in Walt Disney World when we left. And that was cool. There was nobody there but our kids. Um... But in the beginning, I really did want to get married really quick. And then when it didn't work out for me with the first time after I had bought my wedding dress and everything, it didn't work out. I was just kind of like over it. And I'll never forget, we was laying in bed one day and he reproposed to me. This was like a couple of years later, had went by. And he was like, will you marry me? And I just looked at him like, what? And he was like, will you marry me? And I was like, no. And I guess that wasn't the answer that he wanted to hear. And he was like, what do you mean? No, I was like, why would I want to get married to you? And I mean, I didn't mean it to come out like that, but you know, I had already been through the ordeal with his mom and sister bashing me, talking about you're too young to get married, et cetera, et cetera. So at that point, I was just happy with the relationship that we have. And I just didn't want to get married. We only had one kid at the time and I just didn't want to get married. And I was just basically like, it's just a piece of paper. Like, um, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Like we love each other and that's all that really matters. So he kept asking me why. And I was just like, and I had to explain to him that exact same thing. Like, it's just a piece of paper. He was like, you really don't want to get married. And I was like, no, I don't want to get married. Like, I'm not going to go through the shit that I just went through because the first time we were supposed to get married, we did it. And we broke up for like a few months. Like, I put his ass the fuck out. Like, you want to listen to your mama? Then get the fuck out and go live with that bitch. So we broke up for a few months and it was like really depressing to me. And it hurt my heart. Like, literally it hurt my heart. And finally, when I got over him is when he came back. So that's what I was talking about in the last, um, real talk to prior and real talk to this one. So when he asked me again, we just laying in bed. I was just like, and I blatantly came out and I was like, no, like nigga, what? No, get the fuck out of here. So he left it alone. And I guess I hurt his feelings, but it is what it is. Like, I really didn't care. I didn't want to get married. So when we went to Walt Disney world, you know, there was a chapel, there was an, and then we, he was like, you know, I want to marry you. And I was like, what? You know? So I still was kind of like, no. All right. So we did end up getting married. We got married in Disney world and I was happy about it, but I wasn't like, Ooh, yes, honey. Yes. I wasn't like doing backflips or anything like that. It was just like, okay, we were married. And like that same night or the later the next night we got into an argument because we rented a house for two weeks in Florida. And I was like, I should have never married you. This was the words that came out of my mouth. Like I should never married you. And that's how I felt about it. So like, Trust and believe marriage is not everything that it's cracked up to be because to some people, people, some people take it really serious and some people just take it as a piece of paper. And to me, like, I don't really know if I take it as a piece of paper like that, but I will tell you this, like, to me, it's like, if it ain't broke, why fix it? Okay. Like if you really truly love each other, what do you need this one piece of paper to say that you guys are going to be together? Because you can get married today and get divorced tomorrow. It doesn't just being married does not mean like it's the best thing in the world. And like everything, all your problems is going to come to a halt and like, he's never going to cheat on you or he's not going to do this. or He's not going to do that. Don't think of marriage as that, because if you're thinking of that, then bitch, please, you better keep fucking moving on because that's not about to happen. Some people don't take it serious. We're like not back in the 1950s. And what's so crazy about it when I say we're not back in the 1950s, you know, one of my new favorite shows is Mad Men and I've never watched it until it's been on Netflix. And that scenery is like back in the 1950s and everything is all honky dory supposedly. And they're married and they're housewives, et cetera, et cetera. 
let's just get to this. Women were treated not as equal. And though men were married, they treated their wives as shit. And they went behind their backs and cheated on them like dogs. And really didn't expect the women to say anything. So I don't really take marriage as so serious as some people would. Because that's a piece of paper. And you're not going to get any type of justification from me because you were married. You're still going to be a dog regardless if you have a piece of paper. And it just makes life a little bit more complicated at times. So, Peaches, if he hasn't performed to you as a man would or he hasn't proposed to you and you want to know where you guys stand at, as in the future, what I would definitely do is I would speak about it. I would sit him down and I would speak about it because you're not going to get an answer if you don't ask a question. You know what I'm saying? You're not going to get that. So if you want to have a answer to what has been pondering in your mind, you definitely need to have a talk with him and ask him, hey, listen, what is our future hold? Do you want to get married? Do you want to have children? I just need to know this because I'm curious. You know, this is my life. This is my future. So I would definitely ask him. Stop sitting around trying to figure it out. And also, on top of that, if you don't want to be in a relationship with him anymore and you don't feel as equal and you don't feel comfortable in your apartment, but you know as a person that you are not able to handle the bills on your own, but you definitely don't want to go back to your tribe and ask family, then maybe it's time that you find a roommate. A roommate could be one of your relatives that you, you know, you look up to or you guys are cool with or you have a good friend that you guys are cool with or you're cool with and maybe you guys can share the expenses together instead of venturing out on your own or moving back home. Those are just my options and my opinions to you but as far as marriage is concerned don't think that it's cracked up to be what it's all about and just think that you guys have not stepped into that those muddy waters sometimes I say muddy waters some people have really great marriages some don't but it's it's like sometimes the grass is greener on the other side and sometimes it ain't it's not all it's cracked up to be so don't feel like because you're not married or you're not proposed to that life is going to be much better or he's going to be a different person because it doesn't work like that trust and believe I'm pretty sure that I'm not the only one that's telling you or feeling this way about being married or it's even in general being in a relationship with someone because if they're that way and you're not married to them what makes you think that they're going to be much better as a person when you are married to them that's just my opinion but i would definitely have a conversation with him and ask him like where is this leading to where is this going you know what i'm saying he might not be able to give you a 100 answer sometimes that's hard to answer because everybody changes each day as we grow as we get older we progress and things change we stop liking certain things we stop liking certain people we just evolve so it's kind of hard for people to answer that directly but what I would do is I would ask him, like, is this going anywhere? What are, and you know, I would also let him know, like, what is making me feel uncomfortable? What is making me feel less as a person? And if he's not willing to change that and make you feel more equal, then maybe what you need to do is find someone as be as a, a roommate and get your own apartment. Sometimes it's best to step away from men in general and just have your own, even if you're not really having your own, but you're with another female, you know, a friend, a relative, it's still kind of like your own and you don't have to feel like you have to answer to anyone. Sometimes living with a man or being in a relationship in an apartment is, or a household together, it's kind of strenuous because you have different attitudes and he like one thing and then you may feel like, oh, why is he treating me like this? And he may not even really be treating you like that, but you may come off as kind of like, stand offish or he may do it and that may not be a true intention sometimes we need a break so i would definitely have a conversation with him and let him know and ask him bottom line that's about it so yes you guys i hope you guys enjoyed this real talk i let Pete just know your information and on that note i'm going to end this before my memory card dies because i think it's about to so i love you guys stay diva and delicious make sure you rate comment subscribe thumbs this video up because you love me and i'll see you in a soon to come video